So I recently discovered if you take an image like this, which I took from Unsplash, you can actually image prompt using generative AI to create something like this. But it's actually not as straightforward as you might think. If I delete this layer and I simply hit Control A to select everything and I will zoom out a little bit. If I go to generative fill, I type in something like a detailed artist sketch, find strokes, hit generate, we get something completely different. It's actually not a straight up image prompt. But if I go back and delete this layer, but this time, if I go to my quick mask and I grab my color here and I go about 50% gray and I use my paint bucket to fill, I get a semi-transparent selection. I hit the quick mask button again or Q to exit. This time I go to generative fill, art of sketch, highly detailed, fine strokes and generate. We now get this sketch and I've got a few options as per usual. So you can see how now we can actually use this to kind of image prompt in Photoshop. Now I did experiment with different levels of transparency. So if I go back and hit control A and this time I go Q for quick mask. If I go a little too light, so this is probably about 80%. And I try again. It does very little with that image. So I need to make sure I keep it around halfway. So once again, I'm going to go into my quick mask, fill with about 50%, cue to exit, and we can try a few different options to see what we get. Now you notice with the carved in wood, there are some limitations. It doesn't look like it's actually carved in wood. So it does tend to follow the image very closely, almost a little too closely. So if I decide to actually turn that off and then I come down to the background and maybe I decide to adjust that image with say hue saturation layer, I colorize. If I can get it sort of within the right color range and then I decide to add in some curves, play with it until I think it looks okay. So now we've kind of got that wood color because it, sent, it seems to be okay with adding styles, but not necessarily completely reshaping the image altogether. So some basic changes to that layer, I come back and this time what I'll do again, I go to my Q for quick mask. I've got my sort of 50% fill, my paint bucket, add that in. I hit Q again. Another quick tip, try adding a new layer and then just simply filling that layer and then you can turn it off. And then if I deselect, I can control click that layer to reselect at any time. That way you don't have to keep going through that process every single time. But now I've got that set up. I go to generative fill. I put carved in wood, generate. And now the image actually does appear to be carved in wood. So you kind of got a few bits there. I can make adjustments until I find something I like. So that's not quite exactly what we get out of it. So it does have its limitations, but it is worth having a play with to see what you can come up with. So I'm gonna showcase a few simple things I was able to make happen using generative fill. So you can see some things can be a little bit hit and miss. It is not a perfect uh, sort of function, but uh, the generative fill using the image prompting like this is actually very handy just for getting some basic effects and things you can sort of mix in with your photos or digital artwork. So have a play with that and uh, see what you can come up with. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider giving it a like. Otherwise, we'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching.